Hello, I'm Paul Zajic, founder of Elastic Steel Method of Athletic Conditioning. Today I'm going to talk about a very common question that comes up in the field of flexibility, and that question is, how much flexibility do you need? Do you need just enough flexibility to do your skill? Do you need more than that? How much more than that do you need? Do you need a little bit more just to give you that cushion? Do you need a lot more? Now a lot of people saying these days that if your skill requires a certain level of flexibility, don't become over flexible, don't become more flexible than that. Other people saying become more flexible than that for the purpose of margin of error. For the purpose of example, I'm going to talk about shoulder flexibility here. Let's say someone saw the punch. For control experiment purposes, someone punches someone else in the head and that fighter only fights someone who is the same height. In other words, I'll be punching to my own head level. Now, control environment. This is the skill right here. This is the skill. I don't turn in any way. I don't lean in in any way, which of course will increase the angle required. I don't do any of that. I have a set skill. If I have a set skill, do I need just this much flexibility so that I cannot flex my shoulder anymore? But it doesn't matter because I have enough flexibility for that skill. Okay? Can't go anymore. That's enough. Now, in controlled environment, someone might say that this is correct. I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to give you all the facts about it. Now, next somebody might say, well, it's not a controlled environment, so technically maybe a fighter will lean in, so we need a little bit more flexibility. And this applies to any sport which requires some sort of flexibility. And I would say 99.9% .9 of sports require some sort of flexibility, some sort of range of motion. And the third opinion is that someone needs a lot more flexibility than the skill requires. Let me give you the facts. First, let's talk about the muscle. I'm going to have this resistant band represent a muscle here. It does not represent the muscle kinesiologically. This is a straight line. We know the muscles don't do that. This represents the muscle only physiologically. Okay? So... From here to here, there's no resistance from the muscle. From here, the resistance starts and it begins to increase and grow exponentially. Till, for example, right here, you cannot go anymore. This is your maximum length. Now, keep in mind, from here to here, no resistance. Now, there's a range where there's resistance. And, boom, you can't go anymore. Okay? Test that on yourself. Take the back of your shoulder, okay? From here, no resistance. Now you begin to feel resistance. You can still go, but there's resistance. It begins to increase more and more and more. Boom, till you stop. You cannot go anymore. Okay? This is a very important concept to understand. This is how muscles work. A lot of people miss that point. Then they make the assumptions without having that fact in mind. And that fact makes all the difference. Now let's talk about that punch again. Okay, we can talk about any skill, we can talk about overhead athletes with their flexibility or flexing the shoulders, we can talk about martial artists, dancers, gymnasts, uh, having to lift the leg up in certain positions for certain purposes. Let's talk about that punch again. Okay, everybody can relate to a punch. Since I can bring my arm up here, I don't feel anything. But, if this was my end range of motion, guess what? Maybe this here, I wouldn't feel anything, but from here to here, that resistance would increase to the point where it stops. By here, I would feel the resistance. So as I begin to punch, now I'm fighting the resistance of my own muscle. Yes, I can bring my arm here. But do you know how much power I'm losing by the fact that I'm going through resistance, through resistance, through resistance? How much energy I'm losing? How much technique I'm losing? How much speed I'm losing? By the fact that here, I'm going through resistance. Yes, I got to that point. But with how much do I have but how much do I have left when I got to that point? Because I've been fighting myself all the way. I've been fighting my own resistance all the way. Now, if I saw the same punch, but my end range of motion is here, and my resistance only starts up here and I'm punching down here, then I experience absolutely no resistance. Okay? Now let's take another scenario. Okay, I can only bring my arm up here. So, by punching here, I experience a little bit of resistance, okay, because this is my end point. So, the more flexibility you have, 
the less resistance you're going to experience. Now the question is, can I become over flexible? Well, it depends what you're stretching. If you're stretching correctly and you're stretching the right structures, you're stretching the right tissues, you're strengthening them at the same time, you're making sure everything articulates correctly, you cannot become over flexible. However, if you have only enough flexibility for that skill and no more, what you're going to have is you will never reach your maximum potential in any athletic endeavor because your muscles will always pull you back. Granted, you will complete the skill, but you're not going to complete the skill to the maximum of your ability if you have that flexibility. I hope this gave you really nice food for sorts, where your flexibility is, where your flexibility should be. I'm Paul Zajic, thank you for watching.